two lots. Reliable equipment. Fast. I know you all are going to think I'm crazy for adding a second CO2 laser to my workshop, but hear me out. Very recently, right in the middle of a very important production, my CO2 laser got a cracked tube and the power supply went out. This put me out of commission for two weeks and I almost missed that very important deadline. So today I'm gonna to be adding a failsafe. We're adding a second CO2 laser to the workshop and this laser is a machine by the company called Ray Ming Lasers. And the claims that they have made to me, apparently this laser has some very nice added features and can potentially run five times faster than my red and black. So in today's video, we're gonna take a good look at this new laser and see how it compares to the old red and black. Okay, now that the laser's in place, all we need now, water in the chiller, distilled water, and we need to connect the smoke extraction hose. And I made mine fancy. I cut a hole into the attic. Turn on laser. Up here in the attic, I put the fan on a smart plug so I can turn it off or on from inside the And workshop. I have it exiting out here, outside. One for the red and black laser and one for a blue. And I bought this separate, but this is a California air compressor. And I bought this for the very reason that these compressors are super quiet. And I'm going to give you a little sample of how that sounds right here. Okay. That is it charging up. Very low decibels. You, I'm sure you can still hear me talking. And even added benefit, I have it behind a door. So when that's running, everything is relatively quiet. Chiller turns on automatically with the laser. Quick look at the connections on the back. So this is the smoke exhaust coming out. Here we have the water coming in and out. This is a sensor for the chiller. And this is the air in. It also has a water separator here to keep water out of the air system. Now I think we should take a look at some of the differences between this Ray Ming laser, RM laser, versus this red and black, my first laser. My red and black has a work area of 27 and a half inches to 19 and a half inches. The work area on the big blue, 35 and a half by 23 and a half. And of course on each, you have the pass-throughs. So these pass-throughs allow you to do any length of material that you can fit in here. Same on this one. Pass-through on this one is this little door here. So that slides down and then you can pass material through there. To change the focus or change the height of the Z axis, you use this little manual hand lever here. To change the Z height on here, you just press options and then left to go down and right to go up. One other cool feature is the double laser pointers here. You can set those to be at your focal distance. So once the two lasers meet, that's in focus. So that makes changing material heights and everything super easy and also if you have like an uneven surface you can go ahead and frame out your piece and you can see whether or not the laser pointers are staying together if they're staying together your workpiece is nice and flat and everything will stay at the optimal cutting or engraving distance on this laser to set the focal distance they give you this little piece of acrylic you put that on top of your cutting material I'm almost there. Okay. And then you just put that underneath the nozzle to make sure that you have the right focal distance. With the motorized Z axis, if you have that, you can set it up in light burn to do a cut at one height, and then you can have it or step up whatever percentage you want to do deeper cuts. I'll show an example of that right here. So here you can see 
the laser has taken a step down after completing the first cut. And you can program that to do whatever you want it to do. This laser also has a door safety key, so if this is turned in that position there, the laser will not fire unless the door is closed. A little extra added safety bonus. I heard that this bed can handle 55 pounds of weight. I'm gonna try the Z down. No problem, but what about up? No problem at all. It's not even struggling. Down. Actually seems a little harder to go down. Yeah. There's definitely resistance, but it's still doable. Especially when you have big man working hands like me. Speaking of working hands, did you know that I have a podcast? Here's a look at the overall working height. Comes out at about 25 inches. About 32 inches high. You can see I can access the material without really bending over. Okay, I hiked up all the speeds to five times what I do on my red and black. So instead of 200 millimeters a second, now it's going a thousand millimeters a second. Let's see if it can actually keep up with that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's doing it. Wow, that's fast. That is crazy. This is real time, not sped up. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. Alright, let's run the same speed test over here on the red and black with the same speeds and see how it looks. Here on Big Blue. Again, to set the focus, all I have to do is lift up the bed until the lasers meet in the center, and that is my focal distance. Until this piece of wood is warped. Uh, oh well, we'll just have to go with it. But that's what I was talking about earlier. You can see if your wood is not flat. Again, watch those double dot laser pointers. You might be able to see that they are separating a little bit as it comes to the right. That means the board is getting higher or lower. All right, it might be fun to run both of these at the same time. We'll race them. We'll let them do the same exact file at the same time. And I'll give this one the head start. Get set, go. And go. Uh oh, what's wrong with it? Machine protected work paused. Oh, safety. <laughs> okay, and go. There we go. So, Red got a big head start. So that is a true 1,000 millimeters a second. As opposed to this over here. That is not 800 millimeters. Big Blue has started the cut. Okay, blue has finished. Red is over here still cutting. Even with all the shenanigans in the very beginning, blue still finished by 20 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out. And it appears that blue did cut all the way. It's a little bit, a little bit stuck there in the corner. So blue has cut out. Red did not quite cut all the way through. Let me see if I can force it out. Could be a harder wood though. Okay, so this is the blue results and this is the red results. Oh, this is perfect right here. For the 10% value, you can see this is how much was engraved on all of these. So you can see we really don't have any change in speed until we get to here, which is the 250. The top speed on this red and black is actually just 200 millimeters a second. Now that we've seen that Big Blue is truly five times faster 
than my old CO2 laser. Let's go ahead and see how it performs on some real life projects. Here I am putting some monograms on some hangers for a bridal shower. And here I'm going to put my logo on the back of this piece that I had cut out with my CNC machine. This engraving here only took about one minute. Here I am lasering a piece of steel for some trophies. Now to achieve this you have to spray a product on the steel first, then you engrave it with the laser. After that's all finished you can take it to the sink and use cold water to wash off any of that extra white spray. After that you're left with a very durable coating that I would probably consider to be similar to powder coating. And here is a quick look at how those trophies turned out. Okay, I'm about to run this very large engraving. It's going to be 23 inches in diameter. Here it is here. It's supposed to take 47 minutes and 21 seconds, but let's see how long it really takes. And with this extra large working space, I was able to get this engraving up to 23 and a half inches in diameter. On the red and black, I could only do 19 and a half. Well, it just finished 10 minutes early, only took 37 minutes. That's pretty cool. Machine is doing great. And here I am engraving and cutting through three quarter inch thick pine panel. Again, a big upside to this laser is you can have it step down after each pass, helping it to cut through thicker materials such as this. And here you can see it cutting all the way through. And here's what the finished piece looked like. Here is a good look at how precise this laser can be. I'm using this to cut out some walnut and some maple to make some knife handles for a marking knife. And you can also see how small that little logo is on the walnut as well. Once it's all finished, I can take these pieces and put them together and you can see how precise I was able to get these cuts after a little bit of adjusting. And here is what that knife looked like once it was all put together. I am really excited to be able to add such a beast of a machine to my workshop. If you have any interest in the machine, you can ask me here or check the links in the description below. I would also like to take this time to thank my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. And those supporters are Tony at Woodland Iron, and my top supporter, Kyle Hickson. Thank you all for your continued support. Toolbox. Reliable. Equipment. Fast.